Hey there Cootie Crew and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is all about how I put together this Lara Croft Rise of the Tomb Raider cosplay. That includes the distressed clothing, bloody bandages, belt quiver with some arrows, pickaxe, and pendant. I really love this character so I was really excited to finally get a chance to make it and I'm gonna put in the description box timestamps for all of the different elements so that you can find them a little easier. Let's get started. The first element to tackle is the axe. I used just craft foam for this, craft foam paint and Mod Podge and hot glue. So that's all you're gonna need for this. I found a template online that had all of the different layers for it and I just traced them onto the craft foam. Now the reason I'm using craft foam is just because it's really cheap and easy to work with. And since I don't have a bunch of fancy tools, um, I just decided this would be a really fast, easy way to do this. So after all of those different layers are traced out, I just cut them all out using scissors. It would have been better to use maybe a box cutter or something like that, just because the scissors warped the craft foam a little bit. But now I know hindsight is 2020. This is the first time that I've used craft foam like this to create this kind of thing. Once all the layers were cut out, this is what it looked like. And so you just kind of glue them together in that order and it creates that dimension to the tool, which is really cool. So then I covered it in Mod Podge and in order to make sure that they dried flat because I didn't have a heat gun, I just put weight on top of it while they were drying. After two layers of Mod Podge on each side, this is the stiffness they were at. So they held their shape great, they stayed flat, very nice. When you dropped them on the table, they made a nice little clicking sound because they were sturdy. Then I did an oops again and glued them before painting them. I think I did this because I was planning to like smooth out the edges a little bit where they didn't line up 100%, but if you're doing this, definitely paint it before you glue it all together because that will just make things so much easier. I was pretty generous with the hot glue just because I was hoping that that would add a level of sturdiness to it. Um, and yeah, just layer by layer glued it together. So again, would have been so much easier to paint this first before I glued it all together. Anyway, I painted it to look like my reference photos. So the metal portion, of course, I made silver. The rest I painted red and the handle I painted black. Not only does the Mod Podge layers keep this a little sturdier, but it also keeps the craft foam from soaking up the paint because otherwise it just kind of soaks up the paint like a sponge and doesn't give you that same painted look that it does if you've already Mod Podged it. All right, now all the painting is done and I added in some like little extra details like these guys here. Cool, cool, cool. This is not the final product though because this looks too clean. This does not look like it's seen a lot of adventures. So now I'm gonna just quick grunge it up. If you're not new to my channel, you've probably seen me do this quite a few times already, but I just take some black or brown paint. In this case, I'm gonna be using black paint. Um, regular acrylic paint is fine. And then add a little bit of water to it to water it down. And then I use that in the nooks and crannies of this to create dimension, grime, dirt, all that good stuff. And the great thing about this is that it's really hard to do wrong because you're just trying to make it look really dirty, which is great. There are a couple different techniques and ways to do this. One way is to put the paint, watered down paint onto like a rag or a towel and use that to just kind of smudge it around a little bit. Again, focusing on areas where there's supposed to be like layers there. Or you can just use a brush to add it to a spot and then use that rag to come and like clean it up and smudge it around within there. So I just did this around the entire tool on both sides in multiple layers. And the more you do it, the more grimy it looks. You can do it pretty much as much as you want. I 
have completed the axe, which I'm really happy with how it turned out, especially since I made it so... Especially since I made it so quickly and this was the first time I had tried doing anything like this with craft foam. And it feels pretty sturdy now. I think between all the layers of the paint and glue and Mod Podge and everything, it actually came out pretty sturdy. Um, I can't smack anything with it. As you can see, like this part is still bendy, this like single layered piece. But I can hold it really well, it fits really well in my hand. Um, really stoked on it. Um, so I took those scrap pieces from this dress. I don't even know what material this is. It's like really see-through, but it's not tool. I don't know. And wrapped it around the handle, which I think gives it that like great finishing touch to it. So I am going to call this guy done. And now that I've had some practice, I'm going to try to bust out some more pieces. Now that I have the biggest prop out of the way, I've decided to take a little break and I'm gonna try and make her necklace out of some oven baked clay. Um, I know she doesn't wear this all the time, so I didn't even know if I wanted to make it, but I think it's just such a cool like signature piece that I wanted to go ahead and at least give it a try. I don't even remember the last clay craft I did because it's been so long. And so basically I was just kind of winging this and there was no real technique that I followed for this. I don't know. I just kind of rolled it out, cut out a cir circular base that was about the right size, and then just kind of started going for it. Since I was not very confident at all in my abilities to do this, I started with the most simplistic design I could for this pendant. Um, and then I was like, oh, if this works out well, then I'll make one that's more accurate to what I'm using as like, source material. So here you see me making the other one. Um, and then I figured, oh, worst case, I just have two pendants. But yeah, this one was definitely the easier of the two to make. And I just kind of used it to re-familiarize myself with the different tools and baking it in the oven and bake times and all that good stuff. So this is the second one I made, which was more of the design that I wanted to be using for the pendant. And then again, I was just using this to test out the paints. I didn't have regular acrylic paint and I used puffy paint, which actually ended up working really nicely because it was so shiny and like texture wise, um, really nice for looking like stone. And the reason I'm blending it here with my fingers is so that it has more of a marbled look than a brushed on look. All right, done. And now we're moving on to the belt quiver. Again, I'm just using craft foam since I found out that the craft foam Mod Podge paint made it stiff enough for the first tool, I'm just gonna use that same thing for the quiver. So I just rolled out this scrap piece of craft foam that I had. To create that crisscross pattern that's on it, I just took some twine. And after this was already like hot glued together and set, I started looping the twine all around it. Um, I started with some glue at the base and I glued down that whole piece at the bottom just to keep it in place and then after that I only glued where the pieces intersected and finally I glued on this top piece which was just supposed to add that like layered effect and then a portion that the belt loop could fit through and then I did the same thing with Mod Podge and layers of paint and this is what the end product looked like. I made these makeshift arrows using some random twigs and stuff I found in the yard. Now I didn't make them too big just because of the twigs that I was using. And then I just used like some feather, craft feathers that I cut and hot glued them onto the ends. I wasn't looking for them to be perfect just because these are supposed to be something that was made out in the wilderness and they pretty much did the trick. The only problem was that they kept falling out. So in order to remedy this, I put a plastic bag in the bottom and shove them down in there and that just kind of lets them move around but without flying out really easily. For the clothes, I went thrifting and found these awesome khaki cargo pants. They're actually made for outdoors and a gray tank top. And then I distressed them because again, she's an adventurer and there's no way her clothes would be clean. So I took coffee and just in layers 
would add stains, let it dry and add more stains. And here's our finished product. Now let's make some bloody bandages. Here's some rags from that dress I showed you earlier in the video. And again, if you start with some like bright white rags, you can stain them with tea or muddy water before the step. And in order to add the blood effect, I mixed red paint with brown paint and like dried blood and blood in general isn't a bright red. So add more brown than you probably think. It should look like this dark, murky, more maroon color. And then just start adding it where you want it to be on the bandage. The first step of painting is just directly applying it. So here you can see I'm using a paintbrush to not very uniformly at all, just kind of directly apply it. And I'm just applying it in the middle. Just I know that's how I'm going to wrap it around my arm and my leg is just to have that in the middle. You can also go an extra step and add these uh, fake blood stains to the clothing, but I'm hoping that I can use those pants for other projects, so I'm not gonna add that because that would be something I can't really get rid of. Then I left these out for a little bit to partially dry, so I didn't need them completely dry, but I wanted them a little dry. I took what was left over of that paint and added water to it, so it's this really watered down, like rust color water and then I just poured that right over top of where I had painted directly onto the fabric and basically what this does is that it gives you that like bled out effect on that bandage so you're gonna have parts that are like dark and firm where you did that direct paint and then where it's a little more subtle like it had like bled out on the sides so you can kind of see that here and once it's completely dry those bandages are done. And to bring it all together, here's my very unofficial way of adding dirt to my skin. I used hair gel, coconut oil, a makeup brush, and hot chocolate mix. Method one is to just use coconut oil, and I just kind of rubbed it into my skin in the spots where I was planning to add dirt. Here, as an example, I rubbed it over my whole forearm, but when I actually did this, I just did it in small little sections, and then I used the makeup brush to dab on the hot chocolate mix. Then I wipe off all of that excess that you can see because we had a little too much hot chocolate mix, and then you have that nice subtle dirt color. You can see it contrasting with my normal skin color. So it just kind of looks like I've been out in the sun, sweating, got some dirt on me. The second method is to use that hair gel, and I just take, again, a small little section of hair gel, and then dab on the hot chocolate mix. But here you can see that that makes that color very dark, whereas the coconut oil is like a really light brown. And it's also, because the hair gel is thicker, more of a smudginess. So then you just add sections where you have like the smudges of like dark mud instead of just caked on dirt. I used a mix of these two methods all over my arms, neck, and face for that final look. And that's it, time to bring it all together. Of course, I had to bring this cosplay outside, get dirty, have some fun, climb some rocks and some trees, you know, all that good, mild adventuring stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you found part of it useful or entertaining, please give me a thumbs up. Check out the other videos that I have on my channel and maybe subscribe for more costumes, cosplay, and crafts. Happy Halloween, and I will catch you next time.